Hi, Hillary. Oh, hello. Um, are you ready for this podcast? I'm always ready for the podcast. Do you think we sound too much the same all the time? Like, I'm kind of grumpy and you're kind of happy and it's just like the way it is? You know, I think it is the way it is, but I think if all of a sudden we switched and I came on all like melancholy and you were excited, people probably may consider like conserving us yeah. because something went really wrong That's that true. day. That's true. I'm happy being Eeyore. Um, are you ready for this podcast? We are. We have a very cool guest tonight, a world traveler, mm -hmm. and bringing some incredible wine for us to share. Right from the Rutherford dust. Woo! Here Stay we, tuned. Here we go. Hi, everybody. Hello, Hillary. Are you excited for tonight? Always excited. So this is going to be our April episode, which means Easter. Okay. What are you doing for Easter this year, Hill? You know, I, I don't have <clears throat> plans yet. I'm sure Wal Walrus has his... Bunny costume. Bunny costume mm -hmm. and ears uh, mm -hmm. in, the, in the mail. Totally. But um, we have a very special guest with us tonight. So I've heard she's a neighbor of ours. Mm -hmm. Well, mine anyway, in Rutherford. Mm -hmm. She works for a really well-known wine brand. Mm -hmm. uh, and she does global sales. Yes. She used to be trade relations manager. She comes all the way from Wisconsin, and she's starting a um, sparkling English varietal winery. 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 <laughs> I was like, what is that right word? <laughs> In cool. England. Well, welcome, Amber. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Uh, and we got to also preface this by saying how impressed we are with Amber. She just got um, came back from Jackson on a wine trip. Got in this morning at 1 in the morning and then went right into a tasting with like 16 people for premiere weekend. Or yeah, premiere she week. went to the dentist. And she got a dentist trip in. It's impressive. It's very so, impressive. thanks for coming. Welcome. And Thank she also you. brought some amazing wine. So, mm -hmm. should we start with what wine we're drinking? Yeah, Tell sure. Us. Absolutely. So, I uh, work for the Staglin family in Rutherford. So, we're on the Rutherford bench on the west side. We're family owned and operated, which I think is a really fun exciting thing to be able to say as many wineries as you know are, are, are selling because they don't have the next gen but we have next gen and we're having our flagship one which is our Cabernet Sauvignon it does have a little Cabernet Franc and Petit Verdot blended in it uh, we have half bottles of the 14 and the 16 so we're going to be able to try two epic vintages uh, out of Napa Valley and uh, we we do a lot of the right things in in uh, Rutherford which is we organically farm the the property itself or 100% solar run our wines are meant to age our wines are known for having great acidity and balance and uh yeah we rock it out so that's awesome cool how many times have you given that I say, before? she's done um, this before yes <laughs> often just, just a few times <laughs> often yes and we are also doing the 2023 September logs, as well as 2014 in honor of the year that you moved here to the mm -hmm. valley. And one of the wines we're drinking today. Yeah. Ooh, double that. Well Sweet. Done. Serendipitous. Well there we go. Perfect. Okay. Does well anyone done. have a fun log to kick us off for the evening? Yes, I do. Are you ready for it? <laughs> yes. It. Okay. Two men armed with a handgun robbed a jewelry store in the 1300 block of Main Street. Police found their car abandoned on Pine Street. Local schools and the library were on lockdown while the police searched unsuccessfully for the men. While responding to the scene, the police chief was involved in a two-car accident at Main and Adams that knocked down a traffic signal, but there was no one injured. <laughs> Do you think the police chief in the moment maybe just had like a spaz moment and just like uh, hit I, the gas instead of the <clears throat> brake? I wasn't here for that, but I heard stories about it and it sounded like a Keystone cop. Is that why she... They are no longer our... I, th I don't think she's still employed as the police chief yeah. anymore, but I don't think that was the, the, the key factor. moment that did it. I just think that... I wonder who had to pay gone. for that. Oh, mm. the police station? Hopefully an insurance. Which would be us, know. wouldn't it be? Yeah. Yeah, because mm. yeah. mm. if the city paid for it, it's still mm. us. Mm. We paid for it. But could you imagine just like the confusion and the cops running here and then the robbers running here and a cop hits the pole and anyway, it's just... I think the power... Uh, or the Stoplight felt it came down, it crashed oh, down wow. on the road. It's a pretty big deal. So, so Public Works was also called. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> Detour Central. Good time. Good time. I have a report of a skunk that wandered into someone's kitchen Ooh. on Main Street. The animal wasn't aggressive or responsive to loud noises, so it may have been sick. Oh, ladied skunk. Yeah. But it, did they get sprayed, anybody? It doesn't, you know, there's mm. no follow-up. Interesting. It's just, it now lives happily in that it's home. It's one of the things with the police log, you always have to be prepared to be let down. Yes. Much like 
being friends with me. Um, <laughs> because you never quite know what happened. What was the final story? You never know. I mean, can can I can I go before you here? Because this kind of I think maybe is yeah. a collaborative of what you just said. Report of an unconscious man foaming at the mouth in a running vehicle near Hunton Church. Medical aid was on the way. It turned out the man had just been taking a nap. It just is a drooler. Just but a it drooler. was bubbling. <laughs> Bubbly foam, <laughs> not rabies. I bet you that guy doesn't have a lot of friends. He's <laughs> <laughs> sitting in the car alone. Oh, his friends are wine tasting. Oh my gosh. Well, let's get into this. I'm going to try. So we have the 14 on the left. 14 16. on the left, 16 on the right. right. So just open them. I always believe that you should open up wine as you're going to drink it normally. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, a lot of people like to decant and all those things, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. that is never uh, never what I do. Um, cool. We don't find our filter to the wine, so um, you might have a little crunchy morsel in there because nice. um, I didn't decant them. So uh, the wines, yeah, 14. I always say it's like Lady Gaga, all rich and curvy, but mm-hmm. when she opens up her mouth, it's precision. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that yes. wine really has that. a lot of aromatics yeah. and uh, just a voluptuous but yet really restrained wine. Yeah, cool. totally beautiful. Yeah, it's, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, perfumey, very smooth, like absolutely stellar. That's cool. And very like Rutherford to nature too. Mm-hmm. So, and 10 yeah. years old at this point, right? Yep. So we're not talking about something that's young but still tastes quite young, mm-hmm. to be honest. Absolutely. I don't think I'm ready for 2014 to be 10 years ago. Yep. Yeah. I feel like that was just go. like three years ago. Mm-hmm. Yes. So, like, when you're on the road showing wine, then, mm. how do you, do you roll in, pop the cork when you get there, give a little bit of air, and then go right into the tasting? Do you, mm-hmm. like, to, what's your flow? Uh, that, I do. I, yeah. I, I open, I mean, it depends where I'm at, because sometimes cool. if you're working with a distributor, they've already opened the wines in the morning yeah. or things like that. But normally, you, you definitely find a change as you, the, your 10 o'clock tasting to your mm-hmm. 5 o'clock tasting, right? Uh, but uh, I, I like to taste some fresh and open Right nice. away, personally. Yeah. Cool. Well, they're made really well, and they don't, mm-hmm. they're not angular at all, so that works. And mm-hmm. it's beautiful right out of the gate, which is, I think, what most people want when they, they don't yep. have to sit on a decant for six or 12 hours. Mm-hmm. Right? And I think that showcases that well. Mm-hmm. I mean, because I think a lot of wineries, you do have to give it a little bit of uh, right. time to age, or but you can open up ours right, right away and not have the... We have a nice balance between oak and fruit tannin. Yeah. So a lot of times I think oak tannin overtakes the wine and it tears off your teeth, right? Mm-hmm. Makes your teeth water. Uh, but for us, we have that, open it up, it's smooth and easy and lovely yes. right away. Fresh. A lot of times people say fresh for Cabernet, which is not a normal word that you would use for Cabernet. I like so. it. Yeah, and even that, like you said, that 10 years is yeah. very, very um, fresh and useful. Mm-hmm. So I definitely want to hear about your job now. And mm-hmm. then also, I definitely want to take it back and kind of learn your journey mm-hmm. to get here. Because um, if I remember right, you're kind of self-made, self-taught. Yeah. Yep. Yes. I would say that. Yes. I grew up in the restaurant business. So mm-hmm. I was like washing dishes at six with my best friend at my best friend's parents' supper club in Wisconsin. Nice. And uh, getting paid in French fries. Right. That's always my line because it's true. Uh, that's Hillary's and, favorite form of payment. Yes, champagne and French fries. <laughs> champagne right? and French that's, fries, that, exactly. I'm always happy for that myself, actually. <laughs> uh, and then really worked in the restaurant business uh, for a lot of my life, uh, honestly, up until I was in my early 20s. I, I had, had been working excuse me, for a country club for a couple of years, private club, and that's when I learned about wine. And I was never the gal that liked, liked to drink beer mm-hmm. in high school. I always drank wine mm-hmm. or wine coolers first Bartles Sweet. and James which is like you guys probably don't even know what that is but we had Bartles and James wine coolers Barry and Margarita and Golden Sunrise um, <laughs> which is more of like kind of a malt beverage mm-hmm. of sorts which are now coming back uh, but then I went right into Cabernet like I was drinking Fetzer Cabernet and nice. I was like 18 years old yeah and then at the country club started tasting really good things and at 21 uh, I went to our local distributor in Wisconsin and just said like you don't have anyone that's focusing on wine and it's wine's becoming more popular who hire me and I hadn't gone to college you know I hadn't done all these things and they required a a college degree Mm -hmm. so I was the first person that they had hired without a college degree and they finally said yes after I annoyed them for months and uh, yeah so wine and did just I came in at a really good time in the business where wine became popular quickly in restaurants it went from having like tap wine or uh, which now tap wine's again popular, but it mm-hmm. was not twenty. It was like yeah. White Zinfandel and Chablis from Gallo that they now can't, you know, even any longer say that word. But 
it uh, ended, ended up changing, and uh, I was I did very well. Uh, and then Napa Valley Vintners uh, actually called me and said, you know, we'd love to move you out here and come work for us. So nice. I did. Uh, How did you make that connection? How did it go from yeah. distributing to Vintners? Know, That's a yes. big jump. It yeah. is a big. So uh, I was sales, and then yeah. I became like uh, I was taking care of all restaurants, like for mm-hmm. other sales reps as well, and. I would come out to Napa Valley all the time uh, because who would not want to, right? So I would go to Washington, Oregon, but Napa was really, our book was a lot of Napa Valley brands. So we had Bueller and Schaefer and, cool. you know, all these mm-hmm. great wines. So I would come out and I started to get to know a lot of people and that's how that really happened. You know, they people are like, oh, I know her. Yeah, she's great. You should, oh my gosh. And mm-hmm. I think they were looking for somebody out of Napa, mm-hmm. like that wasn't living in Napa, to bring a little bit of a different... Uh, view of the Napa Valley because when you grow up here and live here, it's a very different yes, yes than when you know you you grow up on a farm like me yeah. in Wisconsin, right? Wisconsin farm is different than Napa Valley farm. Hundred <laughs> <laughs> uh, percent. And then also during that time, I went through the Court of Master Sommeliers, and that was I mean that was 15, 16 years ago. So it was before it was kind of cool to become a som. Mm-hmm. Like I didn't really have any mentors or anyone to teach me. I did it on a YouTube video, so nice. went through and uh, did that, and then. He then was here for about three and a half years with the Napa Valley Vintners, and then um, then went over to Staglin. So cool. Yeah, it's good. Know. And now you travel how many days a year? A lot, like a lot. <laughs> um, I always traveled a lot. Now I travel a lot, lot. So it's between <laughs> one twenty and no, it's really between like one fifty and two twenty mm-hmm. a year. Yeah. La- last year I was in. So it's, it was the be- last year in twenty twenty three. I did thirty states, twenty one countries. Wow. wow. Yeah. And Where are your I, favorite I, places to go to? Um, uh, country wise, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. so you're doing the uh, the global, I mean, global sales, so yeah. So, yeah. um, Japan by cool. far is just epically yeah. perfect and beautiful. Uh, and I really so last year I did my top three in Asia was Thailand, South Korea, and Japan. It was like mm-hmm. lovely, yeah. So, it was really great. And then we sell our wine in France, you know. I mean, so in Bohm, mm-hmm. you can buy Staglin Family Vineyard in Burgundy. Like, how cool is that? That's wild. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, in Champagne, you can do the same. There's not a lot of wineries that can no. do that. Yeah, so. very much so. Yeah. And then, you know, we opened up in Ireland last year, which, you know, you think to yourself, like, that's at random. But I just, it was just a really great opening. You know, it was really neat to be there. Nice. Uh, we're kicking off in Sweden, actually, next month. So cool. that's exciting. Uh, but then places like I met my partner in Mexico at a Staglin wine dinner. So, cool. at a, so you know, I, I think it's great. And then state-wise, like Jackson Hole just came off that trip, but I would I would have told you that before the trip. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like it's one of the most epic places in the country. Uh, spring, summer, fall, or winter, doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Um, and I like, I really love the Midwest. And I know a lot of people don't go to the Midwest, but I think it's like a huge hidden gem that no mm-hmm. one ever visits. So when I go there, it's... Uh, I love going to, I love Nebraska. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, yeah, I just, and obviously Wisconsin is always great as well. But there's, I don't really dislike any place. You know, I'm very happy to pretty much go anywhere. To show up. Yeah. Awesome. And do you guys focus mostly on like on premise, off premise? What are your yeah. like? So like 70% restaurant focus, yeah. 30% retail. Uh, and, cool. uh, you know, we don't make a lot of cases. We make between six and 7,000 cases. So we're very tiny, but, and we have a really, you know, healthy wine club, which is great. Yeah. So, uh, I go out and really put the wine in the right spots. So there's, we have a little bit of wine in a lot of places, essentially. Cool. Yeah. Nice. Mm-hmm. Cool. Do you do wine dinners and stuff too? Like with big customers, if they're. Yeah. Well, um, so I don't do a lot of wine club member dinners. We yeah. actually, our hospitality director does, has started to do those mm-hmm. recently. So I do a lot of wine dinners, like private clubs or restaurants, yeah. uh, things like that. I probably, I probably did last year about 150 wine dinners. Oh it's a God. lot. But I always say like, you have to eat, right? So yeah. why not eat with people that love wine? Yeah. So I, I really, really like to do wine dinners. A lot of people don't, but if I'm going to be on the road, I you eat I, anyway. I love them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I love to do them. I think it's great because there's people that you already know are, that love wine, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. So, and, and as much as I do love sitting by myself and having dinner somewhere as well, right. I I do I do that enough still where the wine dinners for me are cool. And we also have a really uh, with the Staglin family, we have a really great uh, philanthropic uh, kind of addedness to our. Uh, to our winery, so we give about a th- almost a third of the production, 100% to charity for brain and mental health research. Mm-hmm. So we're up to about almost 600 million we've raised since '89. That's incredible. So it is yeah, incredible. incredible. And I mean, some could argue that's like the top need in this country. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like, 
and very few wineries give that much to mm-hmm. charity mm-hmm. and you know someone will say like oh they give one percent to the Audubon I'm like one percent is better than zero percent so mm-hmm. I think no matter what you do if you give money to a charity uh, and you're wh- wherever you are in your life but as a winery owner it's it's really uh, amazing and the Staglands really give a lot cool. so it's it's really awesome to work for people that care about mental and brain health cool mm-hmm. very nice very nice <laughs> I, like I like it um yeah, and then they have the, the big event they do with music. Uh, refresh my memory on the name. Yeah, so the Stagland Music Festival. Music Festival. We're pretty original yeah. in that one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's pretty epic. It's always the first Saturday of the month in September. So it's uh, a winemakers cool. hate us because, you know, it's not n- not really the best time of yep. year to do it. But it's a great time of year weather-wise as well. This is our 30th anniversary coming up. We actually don't have the... Uh, we have not announced to the person that's going to be singing or, you know, playing in the vineyard. But we have a seminar first uh, about brain health uh, featuring something different every year. And then we have a, a, about 75 wineries that come from around the Napa Valley and, and other areas as well. And they pour their wine freely. So anyone from from Chapelet to Screaming Eagle to Harlan come cool. and, and just pour. Nice. Uh, and then we have uh, a, a concert in the vineyard. So um, we've had throughout the years... Cheryl Crow, Jennifer Hudson, Lyle Lovett, uh, Martina McBride, Clint Black, so many different great names. And then uh, and then we have a beautiful uh, three to five course dinner outside at the Staglands residence, outside underneath the stars. Last year was the Blackberry Farm Chef. We've had nice. many, many, you know, Christopher Castell, obviously, with Meadowood, mm-hmm. many, many great chefs throughout the years. Cool. Mm-hmm. What a good deal. Mm-hmm. You found, your, found okay. a good home. Found a good home. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Nice. And Charity Garrett. Well, I have a stranger that also found a good home. Oh, dear. Uh An Alexander Court resident said a stranger was sleeping on their front couch. Oof. Their front patio couch at 10 a.m. Ooh. Well... I bet you that this ha- this is this is the next thing that happened then. Police responded to that Hunt Avenue for a report of a woman punching someone in the face. Oh. So it could have been... They woke up and chose they violence. They woke up and chose violence. Wow. Um, this person, this is actually quite scandalous for St. Helena. Ooh. Report of a woman smoking meth and giving <gasps> two little baggies to someone behind the library. <gasps> behind the report. library? <laughs> Hopefully it was on the visitor, not the side of the very library. Very naive of me to say, but wow. I don't think I could identify that meth is what they were exactly smoking. Huh, yeah, how do you, I mean, is it the smell? What That's what it? I mean, I, you know, the I smoke? can't say I've been exposed to... Right. Never done it. No. You know, I know it was meth. <laughs> How, like, how did this caller mm-hmm. understand that it was meth? I don't know. Wow. I guess the meth... Again, pipe. you're oh, let down. Pipe, yes. It could be the pipe. I've watched a lot of crime shows to know what that looks like. That's right. Perfect. <laughs> Here's a good one. A woman, her partner, and four friends went to a local bar on Saturday night. Local bar. The woman said the bouncer was inebriated, and he thought her friends were under 21. Mm. She said the manager or owner told her that's what she should expect to deal with if she wanted to be there. Okay. The bouncer was yelling at them to leave, so they left. The woman said she was scared for her safety, and it almost got violent. Mm. Mm. Care to take a guess on what time of day this happened? Oh, no. Oh, no. You know, most would guess evening. Right. But. Tell us. 2.30 in the afternoon. Well, of course. (laughs) Anyway, I, I think that is I probably a little bit clouded the by the local alcohol. bar had a bouncer at 2.30 in the afternoon. I don't, think I don't even know we had bouncers. <laughs> oh, late at night, there's definitely yeah. a bouncer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Definitely mm-hmm. is a bouncer. I don't obviously go out bouncers at night are. here in St. Helena. <laughs> well, some night I think you should swing on by and have your first-hand experience of getting carded, even mm. if they've known you since high school. <laughs> oh, Charlie. Well, there was a report on September 4th of some raw sewage going into the street at 2.30 in the afternoon. Oh, yeah. that's lovely. Mm. I wonder if it came from the the uncle in Chevy Chase's Christmas. <laughs> the shitter was full. <laughs> yeah, it was full. <laughs> this is my favorite one, I think, of the entire log. Okay. A caller said someone harvested 700 to 800 pounds of his grapes on Pratt Avenue. It turned out to be a misunderstanding and not theft. That's good. Well, You're lucky. I mean, could you imagine if you showed up to your vineyard and they were all picked? That I mean, yeah, good. Like, like, a lot of money. There? Yeah, yeah. Three to seven, eight hundred pounds. That's a lot of money. So yeah. I'm glad that it was a misunderstanding. Hopefully, you got but some maybe wine. not giving people the idea. But maybe that's the new like flash mob crime. You know how people go into the <laughs> Apple store and like steal a bunch of iPhones? Uh-huh. Like they're gonna come in with a crew and just like pick, pick everything pick and run or hold them hostage. <clears throat> 
Well, if you look at it like this, if Tokalon grapes sell for $50,000 a ton, we can all do math. That's $25 a pound, right? Yep. That was... So Did if you think, know that off the top of your head? How many? I've done that before. Okay, I was going to say. So twenty five dollars a pound. <laughs> so let's for, do the for math. For Tokalon, I mean, we've already done it. That's like cooked T-bone steaks hanging on the vines. That's mm. seventeen thousand five hundred dollars on the low end. Oh, right? All for this guy. For this guy. Yeah, for sure. So anyway, what does a Pratt Avenue grape go? At that for? point, it's it's I don't I, mean, I don't know not it's a C&D not Tokalon, a grape, so but so maybe ten dollars less, eight dollars less. Either way, I have no frame of reference. Well, I mean, what, what, where were you? What were your? Oh, you were saying backstopper, right? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, yeah. things there, there'll be much less, I think. Okay, let's that, say fifteen. There would be a lot. No, a lot less. Eight. Yeah. We'll say eight. Sure, yeah, sure. <laughs> so that's still five thousand six hundred. It could be a lot if you get you above that nine hundred and fifty dollars threshold to become a felony. So. Oh yeah. There you go. Okay. There you go. Well, well, I do have good news. Police did pick up a dog. Excuse me. Police picked up a cute small brown. <laughs> brown. Excuse me. I got to say this all again. Police picked up a cute, small, brown, long-haired dog that they found on Pino Way. Oh. The descriptor. Was it returned to its owner? Didn't say. Yeah, oh. Making us wait on that one. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. All um, right, let's go on to the 16th. Oh, yes, 16th. Well, we're talking, talking about, about cute things. Cute, small dogs. <laughs> So, Never been you know, for a I have to admit, like, I I get to taste the Staglin wines often, mm-hmm. uh, in older vintages often, and if I were to pick something from from 2010 to current vintage, I would pick 16. That's cool. just my own personal. Everyone has their own different flavors and tastes and all those things, but mm. I like savory, and I like really bright fruit. Yeah. So, like, in the front, but savory at the end, and I think this has, has that personally. Uh, the 14 has a little bit more kind of curviness to it, but... The, the 16 is, uh, is they, they, I think they're both tasting great. Nice. Tasting great. And 16, I think, was that the end of a drought year? Or yeah. yeah, 15 was the 15 end of the drought. The end, yeah. yeah. So this definitely has more, has some good concentration to it. Mm-hmm. I like the 16. Really nice. mm-hmm. Yeah, you do too. I like the 14 as well, but I like yeah. the 16 better. Yeah. Yeah. Drink it beautifully. Yes. Cool. And as the night progresses, you guys will enjoy, hopefully, again, as we, as, yeah. as we go. Do you have a preference? Uh, I'm, a, I'm a 14 guy. Yeah, I think 14's got more nuance and more... It's more interesting to me. Mm-hmm. And interestingly yeah. enough, more men like 14 or oh, women oh. like 16. There you go. Interesting. So, yeah. Yes. Uh, that must be some brain chemistry taste bud. Yeah, I, I think know. so. I think women are just better tasters. Mm-hmm. Could be. In Maybe. general. <laughs> but. <laughs> all argue. things in life. I don't argue with that. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> I do want to also hear about your England project. Yes, yes. We joked before. Uh, you, you're, you're mean, you're my, you mean my partner or the vineyard? Both, because they're both projects. I mean, both. <laughs> we I joked say that with love. Before. She's say living love. my dream. You're growing sparkling wine. You're living in the UK. If anyone that knows me yes. well knows, the second they make my license doable in there, I'm moving. There you yes. go. Until then, though. Yes, so uh, I, I mentioned earlier, uh, uh, actually, I guess next this, this week, it's four, four years. Um, about a week before mm-hmm. COVID happened, mm-hmm. I, it was leap year day, which actually it's coming up leap year a mm-hmm. couple of days from now. Uh, I was doing a wine dinner at one of the Abers properties down in Cabo, uh, Esperanza, and this very tall, handsome uh, British fellow walked down and sat at a table mm-hmm. And uh, I was very, very busy and couldn't care less because obviously I was waiting for his wife to walk down too because that's what happens <laughs> that's at that beautiful, lovely thing. Yeah. But honestly, I didn't even think about it. I was in work mode. And by the end of the night, he was by himself. And I think he was quite embarrassed because normally at a wine dinner, you have this big, beautiful table, long table, and everyone kind of shares and collaborates and not there. It's a very romantic place. Everyone's a couple, so everybody has their yeah. own table. So here he was this... 6'5", large man, sitting at this tiny table by himself <laughs> on the beach at sunset. No. And he was like deer in headlights. So, of course, I was like just chatted with him and talked to him and, you know, made sure he had tons of wine so he could get intoxicated. Yeah. Quickly. Like, do you want to bring you something to read? Yeah. Or are, you, are you bored? <laughs> yes. Um, but anyway, um, long story short, that was that. It was great. We met uh, and... Uh, we were talking about the next day we actually we got together and and I, I showed him around the island he had never been there before and uh, we were talking or, or hearing about this thing in China like this mm-hmm. you know and we were, oh, oh that's yeah. so odd and then Sunday we actually did hang out together and we were both leaving so I, I drove him to the airport he was going to Seattle mm-hmm. I was going to Napa or San Francisco and we I get this email saying that Provine which I speak at every oh, yeah. every year was uh was Germany, going, in Germany, yeah, in Germany yeah. was canceled, and I was like, "Oh my gosh!" And I had like a four, mm. almost four week trip planned, and so all of a sudden, 
you know, like through the next 24 hours, my entire trip was canceled and I was supposed to leave in about a week, not even like four days. Yeah. So, and he texted me and he sent me a picture of the, uh, the space needle and he said, he works for Amazon and he said, I was just told I have to go home. And so I'm like, Oh my gosh, how odd. Like, and I don't, I didn't think that we were actually going to chatter after mm-hmm. that, but then mm-hmm. we, we both, you know, had just had this like weekend. It was mm-hmm. amazing. And so we were chattering and, um, I said, what are you doing this weekend? And he's like, well, nothing now. I'm like, well, I'm not either. I have like the next month where I have, no I have nothing going mm-hmm. on. And, and we didn't think obviously this COVID was going to last as long sure. as it did. So I said, well, why don't I come up and we'll go to Walla Walla? I had never been nice. there before. Neither had he. So I went up and on a whim and, you know, stayed for f- like four or five days. And then on that Tuesday is when everything essentially shut down. So I came back home and. We, we kind of had this hidden love affair uh, throughout the next couple of months where I illegally drove every other week from Napa to <laughs> Seattle. Uh, like there wasn't even like another car in the road beside Amazon trucks. And I did it and it was crazy. Uh, I don't mean, no, honestly, no one, like I had two friends that knew about it because it was pretty controversial. Like a lot of yeah. people were very... You know, had yeah, this, yeah. and but so many I did. Were it. So scared, and they scared, just... and yes, I mean, you, there wasn't even any uh, rest stops open because wow. they, you know you think about germs. Uh-huh. So I would, I would leave Napa Valley, I would drive nonstop to Oregon, and then in Oregon you can't pump your own gas. Oh, that's so right. th- some guy so would come out, and yeah. yes, and he and I wouldn't even have to like yeah. see that person if I had to use if I had to go to the bathroom, I'd like pull from the side of the that's road what off and think, ah, tinky on the side. Yeah, exactly. That's the good old Wisconsin coming out in me there. <laughs> Um, and then I would drive completely all the way to Seattle. So it would, that would normally take like 14 or 15 hours, but mm-hmm. because there's no traffic Just or anything, go. it would be like 11 hours. So I'd leave at five in the morning and oh, I'd be there by day. No, it was easy. So, and then he one day got this thing in the mail saying essentially he had to go back to the UK uh, because he, there was an issue with his visa. No way. It was a... Politically, it doesn't matter. It just it was a thing that he had to leave. Yeah. And the federal government was essentially shut down at that point. So they said, like, we can't deal with this. Like, why don't you just go? We'll figure it out when you get mm-hmm. back and you can come back. Well, that didn't happen. So in the meantime, my passport was being held at a South Carolina office. So I couldn't leave. Then we had our international border control uh-huh. lockdown. So he couldn't come back at oh. all. No. So I started going out there in October. And um, we thought COVID wouldn't last that long. Mm-hmm. And then by the next March, we we bought this seven-acre property in the Cotswolds. Um, we had gone every every month. We rented a new place on Airbnb because many people couldn't come, return to their homes or they were mm-hmm. stuck. And so people were uh, essentially allowing us to get their $50,000 a month stay for a thousand bucks or something because people just wanted someone to go and check on their Mm -hmm. airbnb and you couldn't actually if you were a citizen and had a home you couldn't go out on airbnb because that would mean that you're on holiday or vacation Uh but because we didn't he didn't have an address he could and he was like trying to move right yeah excuse me so anyway we went to all these little places all around the uk and ended up finding this place randomly and we bought it and um within eight months we planted a vineyard and now we are three years in, and we'll take a crop next year. Where we have uh, wow. we planted Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, mm-hmm. Meunier, and some SB. So we'll make uh, sparkling wine, a couple mm-hmm. different sparkling wines, uh, and then a Sauvignon Blanc still. Cool. Like I said, let me know when you're ready for me to come <laughs> intern. Those are my two favorites, and you Good. have an adorable dog. We have yes, Midas. Uh, we have a Rhodesian Ridgeback, Midas, who's great, and I think we're adding another one to the family this year. <gasps> Well, Wallace so, and I will come. Yes. <laughs> I, we love it. It'd be great. Uh, yeah. So anyway, that's that's exci- that's an exciting little thing. Obviously, the UK is known for English sparkling. That's kind of their th- mm. their hot thing right now, uh, because of global warming and all these things. But it, it, it is not Napa Valley. So I have to say, I was fairly naive when it came down to. I, I knew it was going to be hard. Uh, it's probably a little harder than what I thought. And the other the other really big thing that I was naive on is there's no secondary market there. So like here in Napa Valley, if like you need to buy some old barrels, if you need yeah. to buy a weed or you need to borrow something, like we don't have anyone near us, mm-hmm. you know? So everything has to be new. And then when obviously Brexit hit in 2020 to 21, so everything that you get is from France or yep. Italy. And it's all there's now is hugely taxed and hard to get in. So we've had a... We've had a, a struggle or, or just all, maybe some like learning experiences that we didn't think of but it, it's all in all it's really rewarding like I walk outside and I'm like here nice. here I am like this is this is ours you know so it's been it's 
a lot of mostly positives. There's some like learning curve to it for sure. And like, where do you crush? Sense. Like, is there? There's no custom crush <coughs> no, places. There, there, there is about an hour, is, a little bit. Of, wow. If you think about it, it would almost be like taking it from Calistoga down to Vallejo. Yeah. It's not really not that. Too bad. Like an hour is not that mm-hmm. long when it comes down to that. I mean, and we are making sparkling wine, so those grapes are pretty. Mm-hmm. They're not all the way ripe, ripe as you would mm-hmm. say, and things like that. So. Um, there, the industry is definitely getting bigger there. There's over 500 wineries there now. They're, wow. they're farther away. From, they're not by us, right? Yeah. So we're in the Cotswolds, so we're west of London, and most of them are southeast or south yeah. of London. So, nice. Uh, yeah. Huh. And then the viticulture, is he doing all that right now there, or do you have someone? No, so him, and I, him and I do it together. No um, and mostly, wow. um, and we're, we're building a barn. So I actually do, I mean, he does a lot, believe me. He, yeah. he does a lot. But I would say I do most of the actual vineyard work. No way. Cool. So um, I just did 21 tons of compost two weekends ago by myself. I mean, he sat in the tractor and helped, yeah. like, scooped it up, and then I put it all up on the, yeah. I, I no did way. most of the pruning this year. But he does a lot of the, he does, like, all of the, things we buy he does so much research on mm-hmm. you know he's building the barn he's he is like the master youtube video guy who like he, the entire property is wi-fi on our seven acres nice. so you could go anywhere i mean he's yeah he's brilliant so he i would say i do more of the heavy lifting when it comes to the vineyard work and, but mm-hmm. he is six five so it's hard for him to bend down and you know <laughs> uh, prune and all these things so i and i i enjoy it, it actually mm-hmm. it's kind of my Peace out, relax. Nice. Like well, that's my, that was my next question. How are the grapes situated? Are they mm-hmm. like cane pruned? Are they cordoned? Are they low, high? What? Yeah, so, I mean, they're really similar to what we do here. We're And we, mm-hmm. um, so at this point, we've actually had to, this last year, it was a tough year. We had to prune down all the way and two bud again. Mm-hmm. So we won't take anything yeah. until next year, but it's really good for the root system, so that's yep. good. Um, but we'll, we just, we're, we'll finish trellising by the end of March. That was probably been our hardest thing because we're in Cotswold stone, which is rock, mm-hmm. but essentially limestone, which is great, uh, but difficult. Uh, these are the things that you start doing and you're like, why didn't we pay someone to do this? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, what were we thinking? Right. Um, but they, I mean, it's very similar to how things are here for mm-hmm. sure. Nice. And what are some of the characteristics, characteristics you might find different in like Cotswold versus a French Sparkling champagne or yeah, sparkling. I mean, so one of the one of the awesome two two different things. First of all, uh, sparkling wine, uh, English sparkling through blind taste test, just kind of like we had the chef, the Paris tasting here, mm-hmm. right? And in, in Chateau Marmolena got this and some others. Uh, they just had a recent tasting about a, like two years, maybe three years ago, and uh, a blind tasting an English sparkling one. So mm-hmm. that was when it, cool. things started getting on the map, right? And then SB, we planted SB, and there's a winery that's actually fairly near us, about mm-hmm. maybe forty five minutes. And they they threw in a decanter, did I think it was decanter, threw in a, a English SB mm-hmm. still, nice. uh, with like you know from stuff from Loire and um, Napa, many many different uh, Bordeaux, white Bordeaux, and they won blind, um, cool. the one by us, and we were like, oh my god, <laughs> this is a sign. We were just like so completely thrilled about it. Uh, so uh, I think it's a lot of people when they taste them are, are like, oh god, it's delicious. Mm-hmm. It's just expensive. When you compare, because you can buy some really amazing grower champagnes for mm-hmm. pretty inexpensive, um, but the English sparklings are, you know, between thirty and eighty pounds a bottle. So people are, I think, people's expectations are they're going to be less expensive right. mm-hmm. because they're new and all those things. But um, it's because of not having a market there. Like everything is so expensive. Yeah. So uh, the land might not be as expensive, but everything else around it is. So sure. And then have you figured out a label, a name, or is that still TV? Yeah, I, I think we're going to name it uh, Fosbridge Vineyard. Nice. So we're, it's, it seemed, it, it, I feel like it's, it's where we're from, right there, mm-hmm. right? It's, it's actually mm-hmm. the name of our house. So instead of like, your, like I don't know what your address is, like 421 something something, they like actually, they, they name it, mm-hmm. yeah, they name it. <laughs> That's because it's very UK So it's, there, it's the house. We have, yeah. we own, we're a Fosbridge house, and Got then it. it has like the, the um, name, and there's no like, Address. Yeah, yeah. It's not like an address. It's a house name, so everything's named by a home. So that's our name of our house. So we, we either think it's going to be Fosbridge or Fosbridge Vineyard or Fosbridge House or something like that. Cool. So I think I that's what we think. Very cool. I like it. Mm-hmm. And you'll you'll know how to sell it. The easiest easiest part is making it, right? And that's what they all say. And the hardest part is selling it. But for you, no, for us, it's yeah, it's the making opposite. the vineyard. And yes. Yeah. I mean, if 
I, I already know if I, I had some right now. I keep saying like, crush it. Would be, yes, it would be, yes, literally mm-hmm. we'd be able to have. So, I mean, just think about it. Like all of your like contacts and people you run into, I mean, that's like. You, we'll have you back. Yeah. Thank you. And then you can get the 911 buff. Yes. Like as, as long as it tastes people. good, I think mm-hmm. we'll be good. And, you know, a lot of times at Stagland Dinners, like we will use, a, we'll use, you know, Shrimsburg, mm-hmm. you know, Hughes wine, or we'll use. A French champagne to start off, you yeah. know, and now it'll be nice. Use. Yeah, yeah. Be so so it'll yeah. be exciting, for sure. Oh, cool. Nice. Mm-hmm. And quite a lot of time on the road. I mean, just between yeah. going there to go home, working it's here. Fast. I mean. And I still come home here. I have a home here cool. in Oak Knoll, and uh, and then we have the house in the Cotswolds as well. Nice. So we really live in the two kind of most beautiful areas, really, in the in the world, and. Uh, it's it's good. It's a long commute. It's a lot. It's a lot. I, I I have to say I love Napa Valley. The, the I, my first trip here when I was twenty one, I knew I wanted to live here. It was like a dream to be able to live here, and I'm I'm not selling my house. Like cool. it's I oh no I fully the, the first the first or the last two winters have been difficult there. You know mm. it's gray. It's it's rainy. It's you know there's no sun. Uh, <laughs> so I really well and having the option to keep both mm-hmm. it's. Is the best mm-hmm. in my opinion. Like, why? Why yes. would you give that up when you, you literally could summer in one place and yes. go to the other? Yes, yes. Very I'm not true. giving it up. <laughs> so, what do you think? You liked 14. 14. You liked 16. Like 16. Good. Both great. Both mm-hmm. great. So what? Uh, and on that, like you said, the oak is super well integrated. Mm-hmm. You don't even really taste it in there. It's just well built. But what kind of oak profile are, are you guys using with these? Yeah. So. Um, we uh, we age between twenty and twenty four months, right? Cool. Uh, we do a lot of we pull blocks and then we'll ferment them and then blend later mm-hmm. together. Uh, and we actually have the original Bouillou Vineyard Georgia Latour Vineyard planted on our property in sixty five by Chelichev. So we have you know some of those kind of cuttings and things. So the wines are um, the the grapes itself are are. Not only well taken care of, but mm-hmm. they're they're really historic and beautiful. Uh, and then, uh, so anyway, 20, 24 months. And then uh, we have some larger barrels that sometimes you'll see as well, so better oak integration. Cool. Mm-hmm. We don't use 100% new oak. We're, we're less than that. Nice. So, yeah, yeah. So it's, oh, like I said, oak tannin and, and, and fruit tannin, we like to really balance out. You want to be able to see the site through it. Uh, and like you said, that site has a lot of history too. And mm-hmm. um, I don't know if you could go with me on a trip for history real quick but um that, that used to be bv it was a number i forget which do you remember which number it was because there were each vineyard was like bv1 is the sullivan ranch bv2 is by okay. Madavi. bv3 was george the tour now or george uh george third from for bex toffer and it used to be one it's like five or six anyway i don't know i should know and i probably do know but i'd have to in the morning i can give you cool the answer, no right? that's really <laughs> fascinating but that was they bought that from the sullivans i believe in the the 60s? No. Stectors. Stectors. Stectors, that's right. Stectors. So the Stectors had bought it from, I guess, Sullivan's, and then they bought it from the Stectors. Okay. Now and then they've been making wine since when? Uh, well, it would one? be this, actually the, 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 the Sullivan's bought it from the Stectors. Then the, yes, yeah. And then the Staglin's bought it from the Sullivan's. That's what I Correct. meant yeah. to say. No, you're yes. right. Yes. Cool. Uh, so in 1864 is when that the first vineyard was planted on that property. Wow. Cool. Yeah. And we the Stector house is where we host all of our tastings, and mm-hmm. that was the original house that, she, that Mary Stector lived in and nice. raised, like, I think, like I don't know if it's 10 or 12 children. An aggressive amount. Mm-hmm. Yes. Aggressive amount. And... Um, yeah, so very historic place. We've had, you know, really legendary winemakers come yeah. through the door. Kathy Corison, Celia Welch, Andy Erickson, and now Frederick Johansson and Matt Peterson. So, you know, very excellent people um, making pretty delicious wine. Nice. Cool. nice. And then how much do you get to integrate them as like the production team into what you're doing for sales? Like, do they ever... Bringing yeah. any of them out, or do yeah, they come so tasting? They or? all go on the road. That wow. was one of my thing a couple of years ago. And most salespeople, right, would mm-hmm. go with, like, hey, Frederick, you're going to go on the road, and and you're going to come with. But like, I divide and conquer. I'm like, I don't need to babysit you. Yeah, you, you go out on the road and have fun, and you know, I'm going to set you up. You're going to be involved, and in, like, you'll get the itinerary. Yeah. You know, yeah. uh, I'll totally set you up, and you're going to work super hard. You're going to work how I would, which sometimes no one wants to do that. Uh, you're going to do five five dinners in a row, right? Every night, plus work the market every day. So Frederick uh, went out 
uh, once last year. Matt went out twice. Mm -hmm. uh, Matt's going out to DC next month. I think Frederick is coming with me to kick off in Sweden because he's Swedish, which nice. is great. Oh, so you cool. can see some family. And he's also going to do Chicago in, yep. in May. And then uh, we have a California sales manager. So that's, uh, she's actually West Coast, but um, I don't sell in California. I just kind of help Hollis or, you know, support Hollis. Mm -hmm. And she's fabulous. And uh, she, she's had Shannon Staglin out in Healdsburg in, mm -hmm. in San Francisco. And she had Sherry nice. and Garen in, down in Southern California twice now and do wine dinners. Frederick has gone with her down there. So we've, we really try to incorporate that a lot. And then we have Jaime, uh, who is our hospitality director, which everybody in the world knows he's the best. He goes out and does uh, some wine club dinners at people's homes, and then I get him to do a dinner at a club or something like nice. that as well. Yeah. And nice. we're a tiny team. We have like 10 or 11. Yeah, how many sales people? Oh, sales people, it's just two? me. Yeah. And then Hollis. And we yeah. hired Hollis like through three or I guess two and a half years ago. To, we're direct in California now, mm -hmm. so it's awesome. The wine comes essentially from the winery. So yeah. I don't yeah, I don't come home and feel like I have to work. You yeah. know what Good. I mean? Like as far as like go out and sell wine. Mm -hmm. and she's, she's out of San Francisco and fabulous. And then we gave her Oregon and Washington in the last year. Uh, which is good for her to continue to grow mm -hmm. in, in, in the job. So, nice. yeah. what do you think the most important lesson you learned in sales is? Like, what what do you oh. what do you capture that? I and mean, it's it's a oh, big yeah. question. But oh like, no, it's not big. I can. So there's. I always used to say this when yeah. I would hire people in Wisconsin. No matter what, you show up mm -hmm. and you follow up. Mm -hmm. And if they say no, it just means it's not the right time. Right. So, uh, and I always say this too: don't get drunk. So I am a firm believer that in this job yeah. you have to, especially being on the road, and people will say like, oh, it's because, you know, you're smart because you're a woman, but it doesn't matter if you're a woman or a man, but mm -hmm. you just... Don't get sloppy. Don't get, no. Yeah. So um, I am a, I'm very good at this job for, for those two reasons is I don't get drunk cool. and, uh, or I never drink too much. That's not my thing. And mm -hmm. I show up and I follow up. Cool. Uh, so in pre-plan, so you know, those are all the things that you think that are like the easiest things to do, but so many people don't do don't them. Do them. So... Uh, I've already planned. I've planned dinners in November and December and January of next nice. year already. I mean, it's just yeah. But I, I That's great advice. That cool. extends beyond like yeah. wine sales. <laughs> like, that, does that work in the medical field? For you? A thousand. Show up, follow up, yes. don't, show up don't don't follow up. Like show up and follow up. I, I don't can't don't. attest to that. <laughs> yes, literally. Mm -hmm. don't, I mean, I tell people all the time, like, be your own advocate. Follow up. Yeah. Like, yes. If you ever heard up. from someone you think you want to hear from them or yeah. haven't heard from them, like. Follow up, follow up, follow yeah. up. That's the only that's reason people, how people take know. things to heart. Sometimes they're like, "Oh, they didn't, they didn't respond or whatever." I'm no. like, "Well, you know what? You know how busy we all are. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like, especially emails. Remember when we're all we, human. Used, we we like didn't talk on the phone. We moved to emails, and now everyone's like not not dealing with emails. They're texting. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, why are we not selling texting? Like, why are we not mm -hmm. doing things texting? Like, I started texting all of my people now, and I just get more of a response because yeah. it's. It, I don't think it's. It's not really seen as being a private thing now. Mm -hmm. It's very casual. I mean, mm -hmm. think about all the texts that you get from like. I just got one from the National Park Service. Like, buy our new hat. I'm like, oh, I love that hat. Oh my god. You know what I mean? Like, but yeah. that's, but I'm like, oh my gosh. Like, we yes. we all can text anybody and not feel weird about it. Yes. Uh, my only issue with texting is that I'm in such different time zones all the time. I have to be very like aggressively focused on who I'm texting in my time because sometimes yeah. I'm like oh my god I just texted from the UK and it's like people are sleeping at two in the morning and like here's the wife of the guy like why is this person texting at two in the morning and it's like it's like hey did you why didn't you order this yet you know what I mean yeah, yeah. you know what I mean I'm like oh my god like so I'm now I have to be very aware of conscious that. yes yeah. I mean I put in for just some information about a program and they've already texted me twice called me twice yes. and I'm like oh yeah the texting is not a problem hi this is blah 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 we saw your interest in this like right I'm available wow. please call me I'm like oh wow okay yes you really want me yes or you want my money one of it's two. interesting <laughs> though it, it, but it is a new way and actually I think I'm going back to calling people now so I think that's been this kind of yeah you know circle well, call where... seems serious now like, oh <coughs> they, they want to talk Ooh, to me. the call's coming on yeah, yeah I know do you have a thumb log to close this out, out? Yeah. Um, let's see here's I don't know if this is funny, but this is uh, it's kind of sad. It's kind of uh, uh, this is 10, 10 50 in the morning. A local resident thought she was going to get a two hundred dollar refund regarding oh, a computer no. virus, but it turned out to be a scam. Go figure. She bought gift cards at multiple stores and gave the scammers her bank account information. Oh no! <laughs> Police took a report. Well, I have a Tragic. caller was looking for a family member's vehicle that had two dogs in it. The family member had been drinking and was now home. Police assisted. <laughs> I have a report of a suspicious man talking to himself and making weird hand gestures. He 
He was near Oak and Adams. An officer, con- an officer contacted the man. He moved <laughs> along. <laughs> Perfect. He's gone. He oh, St. Helena. What a special place. Really. Special. Special, special. Um, well, if we wanted to, first two things. If we want to follow what you are doing in Cotswold, where do we find that? Well, uh, we is- have an Instagram page oh, okay, good. Right. called Cotswold Wine Adventure. Cool. Oh, I love at Cotswold Wine Adventure, and then my okay. my other personal one that I do a lot of the Staglin things on is at Vino Diva. Okay. So those nice. are my two, and then uh, I do the I actually do the social media for Staglin Family Vineyard, which is not something that I like to say, but uh, we just we, we weren't really doing a lot when I started seven years ago, yeah. and I said yeah I'll, I'll take it over, and then COVID happened, and you know there was a lot of touchy subjects and things, and I said I just should probably still take this over for a while, and now I'm yeah. like can I get rid of this? <laughs> Uh, so I have three, and actually Midas has his own page too. Midas oh. and the Cotswolds. So I have I have four. Midas Instagram and the Cotswolds. That sounds like a fun he's band. He's cute. He's handsome. I'll he's show you a he's a, a cutie. Band. Your your page is very fun to follow because well you go to national parks. Yes, you're big into the parks. I love parks. You get to co travel the world. I like do. it's always something cool and entertaining, and sometimes like educational yeah. too. Ooh, yeah. I know. I dig it. All right. Cool. cool. Sometimes. Um, and then for Staglin Wines, where would we find? Yeah, so at, we're at staglinfamily.com. At, cool. We're at Staglin Family on the Instagram and also on Facebook. Nice. Uh, and, uh, yeah, if you have interest also in our charity, which I think is an important mm-hmm. part of who we are, is onemind.org. So our charity is called One Mind that focuses on brain and mental health research. Cool. cool. Well, perfect. Cheers. Amber, thank you. Thank you. you. Cheers. Great. And cheers to that. Mm-hmm. Well, I must say, Hillary, I wasn't expecting to have that much fun. It was pretty great. Um, Amber's great. She's hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Right. I know. It and was- the, the best advice, like, show up, check up, don't get drunk. I know. Are you going to use that in your daily life now? <laughs> I'll do my best. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Bye.